Arnas, also known as Cali or Escrima, is the national sport and martial art of the Philippines. The three are roughly interchangeable umbrella terms for the traditional martial arts of the Philippines. Filipino martial arts, or FMA, that emphasize weapon-based fighting with sticks, knives, bladed weapons, and various improvised weapons as well as open hand or techniques without weapons. It is also known as estoque, Spanish for rapier, estocada, Spanish for thrust or stab, and garot, Spanish for club. In Luzon it may go by the name of Arnas de Mano. The indigenous martial art that the Spanish encountered in 1610 was not yet called Escrima. At that time, during those times, this martial art was known as Pakalikali T to the Ibanags, Didya, later changed to Kabaroan, to the Ilocanos, Sitbatan or Kalarangan to Pangasinenses, Sinawali, to weave, to the Kapampangans, Kalas or Pananandata, use of weapons, to the Tagalogs, Pagaradman to the Ilongos and Kalaradman to the Cebuanos. Kunta and Silat are separate martial arts that are also practiced in the Philippine archipelago. General Arnas also includes hand-to-hand -hand combat, joint locks, grappling and weapon disarming techniques. Although in general, emphasis is put on weapons for these arts, some systems put empty hands as the primary focus and some old-school systems do not teach weapons at all. For all intents and purposes, Arnas, Escrima and Kelly all refer to the same family of Filipino weapon-based martial arts and fighting systems. Both Arnas and Escrima are loans from Spanish. Arnas comes from Arnes, Old Spanish for armor. Harness is an archaic English term for armor, which comes from the same roots as the Spanish term. It is said to derive from the armor costumes used in Moro Moro stage plays where actors fought mock battles using wooden swords. Arns is also an archaic Spanish term for weapon, like in the following sentence from Ilustración de la Destreza Indiana by Francisco Santos de la Paz in 1712. Escrima, also spelled escrima, is a Filipinization of the Spanish word for fencing, escrima. Their cognate in French is escrime and is related to the English term skirmish. Cali has multiple theories on its origin. One theory is that the word comes from Jokalele, a tribal style of stick fencing from Indonesia. This is supported by the similarities between Jokalele and Eskrima techniques, as well as Mindanao's proximity to Indonesia. According to Guru Dan Inosanto, Cali is a portmanteau of the Cebuano words, Kamat, meaning hand, and Lihik, meaning motion. In the Ilocano language, Kali means to dig and to stab. There exist numerous similar terms of reference for martial arts such as Kalarangan, Kalaradman, and Pagkalakali. These may be the origin of the term Kali or they may have evolved from it. According to Grand Master Vic Sanchez, the Pangasinense term Kalarangan means Karunungan ng Lihim or Wisdom of the Secret Fighting Arts, or Wisdom of Cali. In his book Cali, History of a Forbidden Filipino Fighting Arts, Fred Lazo put forward that Cali was an ancient root word for blade, and that the Filipino words for right hand Canaan, and left hand Kaliwa are contractions of the terms Way of the Blade, Cali Donan, and Without Blade. Kali Wala, as weapons are usually held with the right hand and the left hand is typically empty. In their book Cebuano Escrima, Beyond the Myth however, Dr. Ned Napong and Celestino Macachor contend that the term Kali in reference to Filipino martial arts did not exist until the Buenaventura Mirafuente wrote in the preface of the first known published book on Arnas, MGA Karunungan Sa Larong Arnas by Placido Yambao, the term Kali is the native mother fighting art of the Philippine Islands. Most likely, Cali derives from the pre-Hispanic Filipino term for blades and fencing, Calis, documented by Ferdinand Magellan's expedition chronicler Antonio Pigafetta during their journey through the Visayas and in Old Spanish to Filipino mother tongue dictionary and vocabulary books dating from 1612 to the late 1800s, such as in Vocabulario de Lengua Tagala by Fr. 
Pedro de San Buenaventura. The term Calas in various forms was present in these old Spanish documents in Ilocano, Ibanag, Calat, Capampangan, Tagalog, Bicolano, Caras, Waray, Caras, Hiligaynon, and Cebuano, Calix, Baladao. Calis Balara Dagger. In Kales. In some of these dictionaries, the term callus refers to a sword or knife chris or caris, while in others it refers to both swords and knives and their usage as well as a form of escrima stick fighting. While Mirafuente posits that the original term was Cali and that the letter S was added later, the late Grand Master Remy Presses suggests that the S was dropped in modern times and became presently more known as Cali. In FMA circles, practitioners of the arts are called Arnizador male, plural Arnizadores, and Arnizadora female, plural Arnizadoras for those who call theirs Arnis, Escrimador male, plural Escrimadores, or Escrimadora female, plural Escrimadoras for those who call their art Escrima, and Calista or Mangangali for those who practice Kali. Origins as Arnis was an art usually practiced by the peasant or commoner class, as opposed to nobility or warrior classes, most practitioners lacked the scholarly education to create any kind of written record. While the same can be said of many martial arts, this is especially true for Arnis because almost all of its history is anecdotal, oral or promotional. The origin of Arnis can be traced back to native fighting techniques during conflicts among the various pre-Hispanic Filipino tribes or kingdoms, though the current form has Spanish influence from old fencing which originated in Spain in the 15th century. It has other influences as well, as settlers and traders traveling through the Malay archipelago brought the influence of Silat as well as Chinese, Arab, and Indian martial arts. Some of the population still practice localized Chinese fighting methods known as kunta. It has also been theorized that the Filipino art of Arnis may have roots in India and came to the Philippines via people who traveled through Indonesia and Malaysia to the Philippine Islands. Salambam, a stick, staff-based ancient martial art of India influenced many martial arts in Asia like Silat. As such, Arnis may share ancestry with these systems. Some Arnis moves are similar to the short stick, Kali or Kaji, and other weapon-based fighting styles of Salambam. When the Spaniards first arrived in the Philippines, they already observed weapons-based martial arts practiced by the natives, which may or may not be related to present-day Arnis. The earliest written records of Filipino culture and life, including martial arts, come from the first Spanish explorers. Some early expeditions fought native tribesmen armed with sticks and knives. In 1521, Ferdinand Magellan was killed in Cebu at the Battle of Mactan by the forces of Datu Lapu-Lapu, the chief of Mactan. Some Arnizadors hold that Lapu-Lapu's men killed Magellan in a sword fight, though historical evidence proves otherwise. The only eyewitness account of the battle by chronicler, Antonio Pigafetta, tells that Magellan was stabbed in the face and the arm with spears and overwhelmed by multiple warriors who hacked and stabbed at him. The natives continued to pursue us, and picking up the same spear four or six times, hurled it at us again and again. Recognizing the captain, so many turned upon him that they knocked his helmet off his head twice, but he always stood firmly like a good knight, together with some others. Thus did we fight for more than one hour, refusing to retire farther. An Indian hurled a bamboo spear into the captain's face, but the latter immediately killed him with his lance, which he left in the Indian's body. Then, trying to lay hand on sword, he could draw it out but halfway, because he had been wounded in the arm with a bamboo spear. When the natives saw that, they all hurled themselves upon him. One of them wounded him on the left leg with a large cutlass, which resembles a scimitar, only being larger. That caused the captain to fall face downward, when immediately they rushed upon him with iron and bamboo spears and with their cutlasses, until they killed our mirror, our light, our comfort, and our true guide. When they wounded him, he turned back many times to see whether we were all in the boats. Thereupon, beholding him dead, we, wounded, retreated, as best we could, to the boats, which were already pulling off. Opinions differ on the degree to which Spanish rule in the Philippines affected Arnis. The fact that a large number of techniques and the names of the arts themselves, Arnis, Arns, Escrima, Escrima, Garot, Estoque, etc., have Spanish names suggest an influence. 
Some argue though that Spanish names in the martial art simply reflect the fact that Spanish was the lingua franca of the Philippines until the early 20th century, and that actual Spanish martial influence was limited. What is certain is that the Spaniards brought with them and used their bladed weapon arts including the system of destreza developed by Carranza when they started colonizing the archipelago in the 16th century. What is also known is that the Spaniards recruited and trained mercenaries and soldiers from local people like the Pangasinenses, Capampangans, Tagalogs, Alangos, Cebuanos and Juarez to pacify regions and put down revolts. Of the Capampangans, Fray Casimiro Diaz relates in 1718, Logic dictates that these native soldiers and mercenaries would have passed on to very close friends and family members these newly learned skills to augment already existing and effective native ones. They would have also shared tactics and techniques with each other when placed in the same military group and fighting on the same side in foreign regions such as Formosa, Mindanao, the Moluccas and the Marianas. One of the more prominent features of Arnas that point to possible Spanish influence is the Espada y Daga, Spanish for sword and dagger method, a term also used in Spanish fencing. Filipino espada y daga differs somewhat from European rapier and dagger techniques. The stances are different as weapons used in arnis are typically shorter than European swords. According to Grandmaster Federico Lazo, 1938-2010, unlike in European historical fencing, there is no lunging in the northern Ilocano Cabarroan style of arnis, it is more of an evasive art. On the other hand, it is present in some Visayan styles documented by FMA researchers Celestino Macachor and Ned Napong such as Yusei Sable Estocada from Bago City. Having done comparative studies, Calis Illustrisimo archivist Romeo Macapagal also estimates that 40% of the blade-oriented style of Antonio Tatang Illustrisimo 1904 descends from European styles, brought by the Spanish. After the Spanish colonized the Philippines, a decree was set that prohibited civilians from carrying full-sized swords, such as the Chris and the Campylan. Despite this, the practitioners found ways to maintain and keep the arts alive, using sticks made out of rattan rather than swords, as well as small knives wielded like swords. Some of the arts were passed down from one generation to the other. Sometimes the art took the form choreographed dances such as the Sacuding Stick Dance or during mock battles at Moro Moro, Moros y Cristianos, stage plays. Also as a result, a unique and complex stick-based technique evolved in the Visayas and Luzon regions. The southern Mindanao retains almost exclusively blade-oriented techniques, as the Spaniards and Americans never fully conquered the southern parts of this island, although Arnas combines native fighting techniques with old Spanish fencing and other influences, a degree of systematization was achieved over time, resulting in a distinguishable Philippine martial art. With time, a system for the teaching of the basics also evolved. However, with the exception of a few older and more established systems, it was previously common to pass the art from generation to generation in an informal approach. This has made attempts to trace the lineage of a practitioner difficult. For example, aside from learning from their family members like his uncle Regino Illustrisimo, Antonio Illustrisimo seemed to have learned to fight while sailing around the Philippines, while his cousin and student Floro Villabril claimed to have been also taught by a blind Moro princess in the mountains, a claim later refuted by the older Illustrisimo. Both have since died. Modern history The Philippines has what is known as a blade culture. Unlike in the West where medieval and Renaissance combative and self-defense blade arts have gone almost extinct, having devolved into sport fencing with the advent of firearms, blade fighting in the Philippines is a living art. Local folk in the Philippines are much more likely to carry knives than guns. They are commonly carried as tools by farmers, used by street vendors to prepare coconuts, pineapples, watermelons, other fruits and meats, and balasongs are cheap to procure in the streets as well as being easily concealed. In fact, in some areas in the countryside, carrying a farming knife like the itak or bolo was a sign that one was making a living because of the nature of work in those areas. In the country of Palau, the local term for Filipino is chad raols, which literally means people of the knife, because of Filipinos' reputation for carrying knives and using them in fights. Philippine Revolution 
Contrary to the view of some modern historians that it was only guns that won the Philippine revolutionaries against the Spaniards, blades also played a large part. During the 1898 Battle of Manila, a report from the Cincinnati Inquirer went. Philippine-American War Americans were first exposed to Arnas during the Philippine-American War in events such as the Balangiga Massacre where most of an American company was hacked to death or seriously injured by bolo-wielding guerrillas in Balangiga, eastern Samar, and in battles in Mindanao, where an American serviceman was decapitated by a Moro warrior even after he emptied his .38 long Colt caliber revolver into his opponent. That and similar events led to the request and the development of the Colt M1911 pistol and the .45 ACP cartridge by Col. John T. Thompson, Louis Lagarde and John Browning which had more stopping power. World War II During World War II, many Filipinos fought the Japanese hand-to-hand -hand with their blades as guerrilla fighters or as military units under the USAFFE like the Bolo Battalion, now known as the Tabak Division. Some of the Grand Masters who are known to have used their skills in World War II are Antonio Illustrissimo, Leo Gorin, Teodoro Doring, Saavedra, brothers Eulogio and Kakoy Kanyate, Timoteo Timor. Maranga Sr., Jesus Baez and Balbino Tortal Bongansiso. Spread The arts had no traditional belting or grading systems as they were taught informally. It was said that to proclaim a student a master was considered ridiculous and a virtual death warrant as the individual would become challenged left and right to potentially lethal duels by other arnesadores looking to make names for themselves. Belt ranking was a recent addition adopted from Japanese arts such as karate and judo, which had become more popular with Filipinos. They were added to give structure to the systems, and to be able to compete for the attention of students. With regards to its spread outside the Philippines, Arnis was brought to Hawaii and California as far back as the 1920s by Filipino migrant workers. Its teaching was kept strictly within Filipino communities until the late 1960s when masters such as Angel Cabalas began teaching it to others. Even then, instructors teaching Arnas in the 1960s and 70s were often reprimanded by their elders for publicly teaching a part of their culture that had been preserved through secrecy. The spread of Arnas was helped in Australia through Terry Lim, founder of Long Fu Pai Martial Arts Academy, who also holds a fourth dan in International Philippine Martial Arts Federation. He ran seminars with the help of other masters such as Maurice Novoa Ruiz, a Wing Chun instructor. In recent years, there has been increased interest in Arnas for its usefulness when defending against knives in street encounters. As a result, many systems of Arnas have been modified in varying degrees to make them more marketable to a worldwide audience. Usually this involves increased emphasis on locking, controls, and disarms, focusing mainly on aspects of self-defense. However, most styles follow the philosophy that the best defense is a good offense. Modern training methods tend to de-emphasize careful footwork and low stances, stressing the learning of techniques in favor of more direct, and often lethal, tactics designed to instantly end an encounter. In the Philippines, the spread is more significant due to the efforts of Richardson. Richard. Gialogo and Aniano. John. Loaded Jr. through the Department of Education DEPT, Task Force on School Sports TFSS. Arnis was first introduced in 1969 to some public and private school teachers when Remy Presses taught his personal style of Arnis which he called Modern Arnis. He taught his own style to the students of the National College of Physical Education NCPE, when he was given the chance to teach there. The style Modern Arnis is not synonymous with the concept of modern or contemporary Arnis, where it has become a full-blown sport embraced by the Department of Education, although there are some similarities. There was no formal program for Arnis from 1970s to 1980s. Although some schools taught Arnis, these were not official nor prescribed. The earliest historical record was the DECS Memorandum No. 294 series of 1995 which entailed the Arnis Development Program Phase 1 This was a joint effort of the Department of Education, Culture and Sports or DECS and the office of then-Senator Orlando Orly 
Mercado who awarded a budget from his pork barrel for the implementation of a national Arnas program. The office of Senator Mercado was given the authority to designate the Arnas instructors for the said program. The next stage was the Arnis Development Program Phase 2. It was just a continuation of Phase 1 through DECS Memorandum No. 302 Series of 1997. The same group conducted the seminars, known as the Arnis Association International AAI. The Arnis instructors designated by Senator Mercado were informally called the Mercado Boys. They were Mr. Jeremias V. De La Cruz, Rodel de Guac and others who were direct students of Mr. Remy Presses of the modern Arnis style. In this memorandum, there were two seminars conducted, October 6-11, 1997 in Baguio City and November 10-15, 1997 in General Santos City. The Arnis module development however did not push through. It was also during this time when the first Arnis instructional video was developed by the Bureau of Physical Education and School Sports BPESS, entitled, Dynamic Arnis. This video featured the Geologo brothers, Richardson and Ryan Geologo, direct students of Jeremiah's V. De La Cruz. However, the National Arnis program of Senator Orly Mercado and DECS died a natural death. It was only after nine years that Arnis found its way back into the Department of Education, formerly known as Department of Education, Culture and Sports or DECS. On February 5, 2004, the Task Force on School Sports, TFSS, of the Department of Education, DEPT, the new agency after the defunct BPESS, met with the National Sports Association, NSA, for Arnis in a Senate hearing. The head of the TFSS was National Coordinator Mr. Feliciano N. Toledo II, considered the father of Arnis in the Department of Education. He met with the top NSA officials at that time, however, nothing happened. It was only in 2006 when the Task Force on School Sports had a new program for Arnis. The National Training of Trainers in Arnis and Dance Sports Sponsored by the Task Force on School Sports, Department of Education, DEPT, was held at Teachers Camp, Baguio City on March 13-17, 2006 and was conducted by two top caliber figures in the Arnis community, Mr. Aniano Loda Jr. and Mr. Richardson Geologo, then Secretary General and Vice President respectively of the National Sports Association for Arnis. And this was the start of the modern, contemporary and prevailing Arnis in the Department of Education. In just two months, Arnis became part of the Palarong Pambansa National Games as a demonstration sport. The 2006 Palarong Pambansa was held in Naga City, Bicol region with nine out of the 17 regions of the Philippines participating. National, regional and provincial Arnis seminars were conducted by the tandem of Mr. Aniano Loda Jr. and Mr. Richardson Geologo from 2006 to 2007 in coordination with the TFSS National Coordinator, Mr. Feliciano. Len. Toledo, and with the financial and logistical backing of the Department of Education. In 2007, Arnis was already a regular event in the Palarong Pambansa with all 17 regions participating. Five weight divisions in the full contact event and four categories in the Año Forms event were played and became part of the official medal tally of the participants. This was held in Coronadal in Mindanao. Arnis seminars were continued in national, regional and provincial levels. These were all conducted by the tandem of Mr. Aniano Loda Jr. and Mr. Richardson Geologo, now both Arnis consultants and official lecturers of the Task Force on School Sports of the Department of Education. In 2008, Arnis was played in the Palarong Pambansa and again, with all 17 regions participating. All nine events were played. This was held in Puerto Princesa City, Palawan. Aside from sports officiating and accreditation seminars, coaching and skill training seminars continued in national, regional and provincial levels. Requests from cities and even districts were also welcomed. The evangelization of Arnis was continued and both Geologo and Loda were careful not to teach their personal styles. Both taught in generic form and focused on the rules of sports as promulgated by the Department of Education. In 2009, secondary girls, high school girls, were finally included in Palarong Pambansa and again, all 17 regions participated. 
From the original five member teams, the number doubled with the inclusion of the girls. The medal tally also doubled from 9 to 18. The 2009 Palarong Pambansa was held in Tacloban, Leyte in the Visayas. In 2009, the Ritshop of the Revision of the Physical Fitness Test and the Development of Learning Competencies in Arnis and Archery was held in Teachers Camp, Baguio City in October 5 to 8, 2009. Phase 1 of the national curriculum for Arnis was finished and the curriculum writers were Mr. Richardson Giologo and Mr. Aniano Loda Jr. The 2010 Palarong Pambansa was held in Tarlac, in Luzon. Again, both secondary boys and girls competed in the 18 categories. It was here that the Department of Education Arnis Association Philippines or DEAAP had its first national elections. In the 2011 Palarong Pambansa, elementary students joined. Duels One of the most important practices in classical Arnis was dueling, without any form of protection. The matches were preceded by cock fighting and could be held in any open space, sometimes in a specially constructed enclosure. Arnisadores believe this tradition pre-dates the colonial period, pointing to similar practices of kickboxing matches in mainland Indochina as evidence. Spanish records tell of such dueling areas where cockfights took place. The founders of most of the popular Arnis systems were famous duelists and legends circulate about how many opponents they killed. In rural areas throughout the Philippines today, modern Arnis matches are still held in dueling arenas. In bigger cities, recreations of duels are sometimes held at parks by local Arnis training halls. These demonstrations are not choreographed beforehand but neither are they full contact competitions. In modern times, public dueling with blades has been deemed illegal in the Philippines due to potential injury or death. Dueling with live sticks and minimal protection still occurs during barrio fiestas in some towns such as in Pate in Laguna. Organization After decades of lobbying and overdue recognition, Arnis, Escrima, Cali was proclaimed as the official national martial art and sport of the Philippines in January 2010. There are two main types of Arnis practiced as a sport. The most common system used internationally is that of the WEKAF World Escrima Cali Arnis Federation, established 1989. The earlier Arnis Philippines ARPI, system, established in 1986, was most prominently used during the 2005 Southeast Asian Games. WEKAF The WEKAF system works on a 10-point must system similar to boxing where participants spar with live sticks while wearing a long padded vest with skirt and sleeves and a helmet similar to kendo headgear. Hitting below the thigh is prohibited. This format has sometimes been criticized because it emphasizes a heavy offense at the expense of defensive techniques sometimes with players raining blows on each other without defending, giving rise to the impression that combatants are merely hitting each other in a disorganized way. This has been tackled by introducing a four-second rule to prevent constant and unrealistic attacks, and judges do not to score the same strike if the fighter uses it more than twice in succession. Judges warn fighters and remove points if they continue after two warnings. However, fights can easily come down to an unrealistic attack from an unskilled fighter who impresses judges with many body hits after taking two or three clear, strong hits to the hands and head. This is, to some, an antithesis to traditional training methods, where training in footwork and arm, weapon movements are intricate and precise and any part of an opponent's body is fair game. As a consequence, WEKAF tournaments may be seen as not promoting the original art. Moreover, participants have been known to suffer broken bones and injured tendons due to the fact that live sticks are used, so the older system is considered more hardcore and less safe. Another complaint about the WEKAF system is that it uses the 10-point must system, which is more subjective depending on who is judging. Since the WEKAF system is more risky, it is preferred by many practitioners who want to test themselves. The WEKAF system is the most widely used format internationally. RP 
The modern Arnis system uses foam padded sticks about an inch in diameter with thin rattan cores roughly a centimeter in diameter. These sticks are meant to break before serious injury occurs. For protection, the same headgear used in the WEKAF system, and a large growing guard is required for males. Vests, optional for men, required for women, optional arm guards, shin guards and leg wraps are used. Scoring is more similar to fencing where fighters are separated after solid clean hits are made, observed by multiple judges stationed at different positions to observe if hits were clean and unblocked, and determine the strength of the strike by the loudness of the impact. Alternative ways to score are to disarm one's opponent or to force him to step outside the ring. Any part of the body, from head to toe, is fair game as a target, except for the back of the head, which the headgear does not protect. Stabs to the face are not allowed, because the thin rattan core may penetrate the padding and slip through the grills of the headgear into the player's eye. Thrusts to the body score points, but are harder to present to judges for scoring because they make less noise and it is difficult to determine impact. Punches, kicks and throws are not allowed. Prolonged clinching to prevent the opponent from striking is not allowed, similar to Western boxing, to keep the game moving and more interesting for audience that may not appreciate the fine and practical aspects of grappling. Disarms must be performed quickly and cleanly to count. Because the legs are fair targets, in lighter weight divisions, complex evasion and deep lunges where players lie horizontal with the torso almost touching the floor to extend reach are often seen. The emphasis of the RP system is on player safety, as proponents are applying to become a recognized Olympic sport like judo, karate, taekwondo, wrestling, boxing, and fencing. Even though padded sticks are used in the sport, players regularly retain large bruises that last for weeks and sometimes minor injuries to joints and because of the sheer amount of force generated by conditioned practitioners. Sometimes the stuffing commonly comes off from the harder hitting players and one cause of injury is when a player is struck by the exposed rattan core. Still, these are relatively minor as compared to injuries sustained when practitioners spar with live sticks. One major problem with the RP system is that because the padded sticks with light rattan cores are used, they tend to flex and lag. Thus making the experience significantly different from using a live stick and in that sense, lessens the realism of this system. This is acceptable though as again, the emphasis is on safety. Like the seiya, meaning dance. In the WEKAF system, the RP system has a separate single and team choreographed division called Anyo, Tagalog for forms. Aside from the visual appeal, practical combative applications must be clearly seen so as to avoid looking like just majorettes in marching bands who just twirl batons and dance, a concept similar to the floreo, flourish, aspect of capoeira and to tricking which are more for show than practicality. IMAFP standard equipment is being used in the international arena. Others in another variation that simulates knife fights, competitors use false blades edged with lipstick to mark where an opponent has been struck. These matches are considered more similar to traditional duels than the WEKAF point system. Weapons Arnis students start their instruction by learning to fight with weapons, and only advance to empty hand training once the stick and knife techniques have been sufficiently mastered. This is in contrast to most other well-known Asian martial arts but it is justified by the principle that barehanded moves are acquired naturally through the same exercises as the weapon techniques, making muscle memory an important aspect of the teaching. It is also based on the obvious fact that an armed person who is trained has the advantage over a trained unarmed person, and serves to condition students to fight against armed assailants. Most systems of arnis apply a single set of techniques for the stick, knife, and empty hands, a concept sometimes referred to as motion grouping. Since the weapon is seen as simply an extension of the body, the same angles and footwork are used either with or without a weapon. The reason for this is probably historical, because tribal warriors went into battle armed and only resorted to bare-handed fighting after losing their weapons. Many systems begin training with two weapons, either a pair of sticks or a stick and a wooden knife. These styles emphasize keeping both hands full and never moving them in the same direction, and trains practitioners to become ambidextrous. 
For example, one stick may strike the head while the other hits the arm. Such training develops the ability to use both limbs independently, a valuable skill, even when working with a single weapon. A core concept and distinct feature of Filipino martial arts is the live hand. Even when as a practitioner wields only one weapon, the extra hand is used to control, trap or disarm an opponent's weapon and to aid in blocking, joint locking and manipulation of the opponent or other simultaneous motions such as bicep destruction with the live hand. Baston The most basic and common weapon in Arnis is the baston or yantok. They are typically constructed from rattan, an inexpensive stem from a type of Southeast Asian vine. Hard and durable yet lightweight, it shreds only under the worst abuse and does not splinter like wood, making it a safer training tool. This aspect makes it useful in defense against blades. Kamagong ironwood or ebony, and bahi heart of the palm, are sometimes used after being charred and hardened. These hardwoods are generally not used for sparring, however, as they are dense enough to cause serious injury, but traditional sparring does not include weapon-to-body contact. The participants are skilled enough to parry and counterstrike, showing respect in not intentionally hitting the training partner. In modern times, many Arnis practitioners have also come to wear head and hand protection while sparring with rattan sticks, or otherwise use padded bastons. Some modern schools also use sticks made out of aluminium or other metals, or modern high-impact plastics. Impact weapons Baston, Elisi, Yantok, stick ranging from 24 to 28 inches long. Largo Mano Yantok, longer stick ranging from 28 to 36 inches. Dulo Y Dulo, short stick about 4 to 7 inches in length, held in the palm of the hand. Banka, 6 foot pole. Staves can be used to practice sword techniques. Wooden dagger measuring 12 to 14 inches, 300 to 360 millimeters. Pananga, shield. Improvised weapons, wood planks, steel pipes, umbrellas, flashlights, rolled up magazines, newspapers, books, cellular phones, tennis rackets, butt of billiards cue, bottles, coffee mugs, chair legs, tree branches or twigs, etc. Edged weapons Bara is a Cebuano term used in escrima that means knife or dagger. The term Bara is more commonly used on the Cebu Island in the Visayan region whereas other islands and regions more commonly use the term Daga but both terms are often interchangeable within the Filipino martial arts community. The terms Bara and Daga can be used either as solo Bara or solo Daga associated with single knife fighting and defense systems, doble Bara or doble Daga associated with the double knife fighting systems or even with a combination of long and short weapons e.g. stick and dagger fighting systems Elisi Bara or sword and dagger fighting systems Espada y Daga. Daga, cuchillo, Spanish for dagger and knife, or Bara, pasa, daggers or knives of different shapes and sizes, Balisong, fan knife or butterfly knife from Barrio Balisong in Batangas Province. The handle is two-piece and attaches to a swivel that folds to enclose the blade when shut. Karambit, claw-shaped Indo-Malay blade held by inserting the finger into a hole at the top of the handle. Bolo, a knife, sword similar to a machete. Pinuti, a type of sword from Cebu blade shaped similar to a sundang but elongated. Itak or sundang, a farm or household bladed implement, its blade has a pronounced belly, chisel ground edge with the handle angled down. Barong, wide flat leaf shaped blade commonly used by women. Binacoco, long blade named after a porgy fish. Dinahong Pele, has a very narrow blade shape similar to a rice leaf. Kalis or Chris, Indo-Malay dagger, often given a wavy blade, it is most commonly used in the southern provinces. Kampilan, fork-tipped sword, popular in the southern Philippines. Sibat, spear. Improvised weapons, ice picks, box cutters, screwdrivers, scissors, broken bottles, pens, car keys, using the push knife grip. Flexible weapons. 
Sarong, a length of fabric wrapped around the waist. Ekat, handkerchief. Tabak toyak, chain sticks, flail or nunchaku. Latigo, Spanish for whip, consisting of a handle between 8 and 12 inches, 200 and 300 millimeters, and a lash composed of a braided thong 3 to 20 feet, 0.91 to 6.10 meters long. The fall at the end of the lash is a single piece of leather 10 to 30 inches, 250 to 760 millimeters in length. Improvised weapons, belt, bandana, handkerchiefs, shirts, towels, socks with hard soap bars, rocks, ropes, power cables, etc. Rank and grading system The practitioners must conform to criteria based on the number of years of training and level of proficiency to the technical skills. Practitioners are screened by the Rank Promotion Committee to determine their rank in the grading system. Technical aspects Ranges Most systems recognize that the technical nature of combat changes drastically as the distance between opponents changes, and generally classify the ranges into at least three categories. Each range has its characteristic techniques and footwork. Of course, some systems place more emphasis on certain ranges than others, but almost all recognize that being able to work in and control any range is essential. The Valintawak style for example, uses long, medium and short range fighting techniques, but focuses on the short range. To control the range, and for numerous other purposes, good footwork is essential. Most Eskrima systems explain their footwork in terms of triangles, normally when moving in any direction two feet occupy two corners of the triangle and the step is to the third corner such that no leg crosses the other at any time. The shape and size of the triangle must be adapted to the particular situation. The style of footwork and the standing position vary greatly from school to school and from practitioner to practitioner. For a very traditional school, conscious of battlefield necessities, stances are usually very low, often with one knee on the ground, and footwork is complex, involving many careful cross steps to allow practitioners to cope with multiple opponents. The Villabril and San Miguel styles are usually taught in this way. Systems that have been adapted to duels or sporting matches generally employ simpler footwork, focusing on a single opponent. North American schools tend to use much more upright stances, as this puts less stress on the legs, but there are some exceptions. Strikes Many Filipino systems focus on defending against and or reacting to angles of attack rather than particular strikes. The theory behind this is that virtually all types of hand-to-hand -hand attacks bare-handed or with a weapon hit or reach a combatant via these angles of attack and the reasoning is that it is more efficient to learn to defend against different angles of attack rather than learn to defend against particular styles, particular techniques or particular weapons. For instance, the technique for defending against an attack angle that comes overhead from the right is very similar whether the attacker uses bare fists, a knife, a sword or a spear. Older styles gave each angle a name, but more recent systems tend to simply number them. Many systems have 12 standard angles, though some have as few as 5, and others as many as 72. Although the exact angles, the order they are numbered in, numerado, and the way the player executes moves vary from system to system, most are based upon Filipino cosmology. These standard angles describe exercises. To aid memorization, player often practice a standard series of strikes from these angles, called an abecedara, Spanish for alphabet. These are beginner strikes or the ABCs of Arnas. Some angles of attack and some strikes have characteristic names. San Miguel is a forehand strike with the right hand, moving from the striker's right shoulder toward their left hip. It is named after Saint Michael or the Archangel Michael, who is often depicted holding a sword at this angle. This is the most natural strike for most untrained people. It is commonly referred to as angle number one in systems where striking angles are numbered for training purposes, because it is presumed the most probable angle of attack. Sinawali is the signature double stick weaving movement associated with Arnas named after the woven coconut or palm leaves called sawali that comprise the walls of Nipah hut dwellings. 
It is commonly seen in double stick continuous attack parry partner demonstrations. Another signature technique is the redonda, which is a continuous circular downward striking double stick twirling technique. A redonda, Spanish for round, is a strike that whips in a circle to return to its point of origin. This is especially useful when using sticks rather than swords, such a strike allows extremely fast strikes but needs constant practice. An abanica, Spanish for fan, or wittic is a strike that is executed by flicking the wrist 180 degrees in a fan-shaped motion. This kind of strike can be very quick and arrive from unexpected angles. Pilantic is a strike executed by whipping the stick around the wrist over the head in a motion similar to the abanica, but in alternating 360-degree strikes. It is most useful when fighters are in grappling range and cannot create enough space for normal strikes. Hakbing Filipino for step is a general term for footwork. For example, hakbing piwas is pivoting footwork, while hakbing totsalak is triangle stepping. Puño, Spanish for fist, hilt, or handle, is a strike delivered with the butt of the weapon. It usually targets a nerve point or other soft spot on the opponent but in skilled hands, the puño can be used to shatter bones. Note that many arnis techniques have Spanish names, because Spanish was the lingua franca spoken during colonial times among the natives who spoke over 170 different dialects in the archipelago's 7,100 plus islands. Arnis techniques are generally based on the assumption that both student and opponent are very highly trained and well prepared. For this reason, Arnis tends to favor extreme caution, always considering the possibility of a failed technique or an unexpected knife. On the other hand, the practitioner is assumed able to strike precisely and quickly. The general principle is that an opponent's ability to attack should be destroyed rather than trying to hurt them to convince them to stop. Thus many strikes are aimed at the hands and arms, hoping to break the hand holding the weapon or cut the nerves or tendons controlling it the concept of defanging the snake, but strikes to the eyes and legs are important. A popular mnemonic states that, Stick seeks bone, blade seeks flesh. Mano 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 is the empty hand component of Filipino martial arts, particularly arnis. The term translates as hands, or hand-to-hand, -hand, and comes from the Spanish word mano, hand. It is also known as suntukan or pananuntukan in Luzon and pangamot in the Visayas, as well as de cadena or cadena de mano in some FMA systems. American colonists referred to it as combat judo, or Filipino boxing. Mano-mano also includes kicking, punching, locking, throwing and dumont grappling. Filipino martial artists regard the empty hands as another weapon and all the movements of mano-mano are directly based on weapon techniques. In Arnis, weapons are seen as an extension of the body so training with weapons naturally leads to proficiency in bare-handed combat. For this reason, mano-mano is often taught in the higher levels of Arnis after weapons training has been mastered because advanced students are expected to be able to apply their experience with weapons to unarmed fighting. This not always the case though, as some systems of arnis start with, and at times only consist of, empty hands fighting. Some notable masters of Mano Mano include Antonio Ilustrisimo, Venancio Ainshing, Bacon, Ray Galling, Edgar Salite, Danny Guba. Francisco Galeto, Seferino Garcia, Gabriel Ellert. Kicking Paninipa, Pagzipa, Pananadiak, Pagtadiak, and Sikaran, all terms for kicking in various regions, dialects, and styles are components of escrima that focus on knees, tripping, low line kicks, and stomps. Panajakman is also a term used in Filipino-American developed and Western FMA systems, usually referring to the system from the Lucky Lucalake, Floro Villabril and Dan Inosanto blend lineage. 
except for the distinct style of Sikaran from the Baras area of the province of Rizal, which also uses high kicks. Kicking as a separate art is never taught by itself in the Philippines, and this practice is only done in the West with Panajakman. Panajakman is usually taught together with Panantukan. Paninipa can be regarded as the study of leg muscles and bones and how they are connected, with the goal of either inflicting pain or outright breaking or dislocating the bones. Most striking techniques involve applying pressure to bend the target areas in unnatural ways so as to injure or break them. Such pressure may be delivered in the form of a heel smash, a toe kick, a stomp, or a knee. Targets include the groin, thighs, knees, shins, ankles, feet and toes. The upper body is used only for defensive maneuvers, making Pananadiak ideal for when combatants are engaged in a clinch. When used effectively, the strikes can bring an opponent to the ground or otherwise end an altercation by making them too weak to stand. Fundamental techniques include kicking or smashing the ankle to force it either towards or away from the opposite foot, severe supination or pronation, respectively, heel stomping the top of the foot where it meets the lower leg so as to break or crush the numerous bones or otherwise disrupt the opponent's balance, and smashing the opponent's knee from the side to break the knee, with severe supination and pronation as the desired result. Drills Several classes of exercises, such as sombrada, contrada, sinawali, hubud lubid and sakitas, initially presented to the public as a set of organized drills by the Inosanto school, are expressly designed to allow partners to move quickly and experiment with variations while remaining safe. For example, in a sombrada drill, one partner feeds an attack, which the other counters, flowing into a counterattack, which is then countered, flowing into a counterattack, and so on. The hubud lubad or hubad lubad from Dose Paras is frequently used as a type of generator drill, where one is forced to act and think fast. Initially, students learn a specific series of attacks, counters, and counterattacks. As they advance they can add minor variations, change the footwork, or switch to completely different attacks, eventually the exercise becomes almost completely free form. Palaka, from the Balintawak style, are unchoreographed and random defensive and offensive moves. Palaka in Cebuano means a walk through or rehearsing the different strike angles and defenses. It may be known as caritas, or striking without any order or pattern. Disarms, takedowns, and other techniques usually break the flow of such a drill, but they are usually initiated from such a sequence of movements to force the student to adapt to a variety of situations. A common practice is to begin a drill with each student armed with two weapons. Once the drill is flowing, if a student sees an opportunity to disarm their opponent, they do, but the drill continues until both students are empty-handed. Some drills use only a single weapon per pair, and the partners take turns disarming each other. Seguidas drills, taken from the San Miguel system, are sets of hitting and movement patterns usually involving stick and dagger. Rhythm, while an essential part of Eskrima drills, is emphasized more in the United States and Europe, where a regular beat serves a guide for students to follow. To ensure safety, participants perform most drills at a constant pace, which they increase as they progress. The rhythm, together with the southern Filipino attire of a vest and sashed pants, is commonly mistaken for some sort of tradition when practicing Eskrima in the Philippines, perhaps incorrectly derived from traditional rhythm-based dances or an attempt to add a sense of ethnicity. Eskrima is usually practiced in the Philippines without a rhythm, off-beat or out of rhythm. The diversity of Filipino martial arts means that there is no officially established standard uniform in Eskrima. The live hand The live hand is the opposite hand of the practitioner that does not contain the main weapon. The heavy usage of the live hand is an important concept and distinguishing hallmark of eskrima. Even, or especially, when empty, the live hand can be used as a companion weapon by eskrima practitioners. As opposed to most weapon systems like fencing where the offhand is hidden and not used to prevent it from being hit, Eskrima actively uses the live hand for trapping, locking, supporting weapon blocks, checking, disarming, striking and controlling the opponent. The usage of the live hand is one of the most evident examples of how Eskrima's method of starting with weapons training leads to effective empty hand techniques. 
because of doble baston, double weapons, or espada y daga, sword and parrying dagger, ambidextrous weapon muscle memory conditioning, escrima practitioners find it easy to use the offhand actively once they transition from using it with a weapon to an empty hand. Doble baston Doble baston, and less frequently doble alisi, are common names for a group of techniques involving two sticks. The art is more commonly known around the world as sinawali meaning to weave. The term sinawali is taken from a matting called sawali that is commonly used in the tribal nipa huts. It is made up of woven pieces of palm leaf and used for both flooring and walls. This technique requires the user to use both left and right weapons in an equal manner. Many coordination drills are used to help the practitioner become more ambidextrous. It is the section of the art that is taught mainly at the intermediate levels and above and is considered one of the most important areas of learning in the art. Sinawali Sinawali refers to the activity of weaving as applied eskrima with reference to a set of two-person, two-weapon exercises. The term comes from Sawali, the woven walls of Nipa huts. Sinawali exercises provide eskrima practitioners with basic skills and motions relevant to a mode of two-weapon blocking and response method called dablete. Sinawali training is often introduced to novices to help them develop certain fundamental skills, including, body positioning and distance relative to an opponent, rotation of the body and the proper turning radius, recognition of one's center of gravity, eye-hand coordination, target perception and recognition, increased ambidexterity, recognition and performance of rhythmic structures for upper body movement, and muscular developments important to the art, especially, the wrist and forearm regions. It helps teach the novice escrimador proper positioning while swinging a weapon. Cross training The Chinese and Malay communities of the Philippines have practiced escrima together with kunta and silat for centuries, so much so that many North Americans mistakenly believe silat to have originated in the Philippines. Some of the modern styles, particularly Dose Pares and modern Arnas contain some elements of Japanese martial arts such as joint locks, throws, blocks, strikes, and groundwork, taken from, Jujutsu, Judo, Aikido and Karate as some of the founders obtained black belt dan grades in some of these systems. Some Eskrima styles are complementary with Chinese Wing Chun, or Japanese Aikido because of the nervous system conditioning and body mechanics when striking, twirling or swinging sticks. In Western countries, it is common to practice eskrima in conjunction with other martial arts, particularly Wing Chun, Jeet Kune Do and Silat. As a result, there is some confusion between styles, systems, and lineage, because some people cross-train without giving due credit to the founders or principles of their arts. For example, American Kenpo and Kaju Kenpo cross-training traces back to the interactions between Chinese, Japanese and Filipino immigrants in territorial pre-statehood Hawaii, and to a lesser extent in other parts of the United States. In the United States the cross-training between Eskrima and Jeet Kune Do concepts is headed by Dan Ino Santo of the Ino Santo Academy in Marina del Rey, California, goes according to the maxim, Absorb what is useful, reject what is useless. Proponents of such training say the arts are very similar in many aspects and complement each other well. It has become marketable to offer eskrima classes in other traditional Asian martial arts studios in America but some practitioners of other eskrima styles often dismiss these lessons as debased versions of original training methods. Notable styles and practitioners Arnas as national martial arts and sports Republic Act No. 9850 of the Congress of the Philippines, approved on December 11, 2009 declares Arnas as the national sport and martial art of the Philippines for promoting patriotism, nationalism and appreciation of the role of national heroes and symbols in the historical development of the country. There were many versions of the Arnas Bill but the version chosen was drafted by Richardson Giologo which was submitted to the Senate. Because of this law, Arnas becomes a prerequisite for PE classes in most colleges in the Philippines. Arnas in popular culture Records 
More than 4,200 students and athletes performed Arnis in the Cebu City Sports Center during the closing ceremonies of the Batang Pinoy 2015, to set a record for the largest Arnis class in the world for Guinness World Records. See also Maharlika Timawit Juramentado Filipino martial arts Balisong Balintawak Sugbu Kinamote Sikaran Suntukan Philippine Army Armed Forces of the Philippines Knife Fight Puego del Palo the Way of the Warrior Yayan Human Weapon Escrimadores, Documentary Film Fight Quest Mind, Body and Kick-Ass Moves References Further reading Placido Yambao and Buenaventura Mirafuente, 1957. MGA Karunungan sa Larong Arnas. University of the Philippines Press. External links The Arnas Philippines Organization website Balintawak Sugbu Traditional Velasan Fighting System IKAEF, International Cali Arnas Escrima Federation the Filipino Martial Arts Forum FMA Informative – Propagating the Filipino Martial Arts and the Culture of the Philippines Eskrima Entry on Wiki Martial Arts The FMA Eskrima Cali FAQ Eskrima Arnas – Martial Arts of the Philippines Eskrima Books at Goodreads. Com. FMA Talk Live, podcast dedicated to the promotion of Filipino martial arts.